Before we start, spoiler alert to BBC audiences and the readers of the New York Times and the alike. I might shatter your beliefs, but I'm not sorry. Here's what I found. Earlier this month, the well-respected the New York Times published an article down with the British monarchy. I thought countries like Japan might have really dodged a bullet here. The more gruesome part reads: abolishing the monarchy shouldn't be too tricky. First, you take away their homes, then you take away their wealth, then you take away their titles. All of those things properly belong to the public, and those squatters have held them for far too long. Wow! If I get this right, this article is effectively calling for a revolution or a riot. Either way, the New York Times clearly doesn't care that the royal family is loved by the British people. It is so busy selling the American ideology and its self-righteous justice that it doesn't worry about causing chaos to other countries. Or is chaos what they really want? The sheer contempt for the British monarchy shows the New York Times has no respect for other countries' established systems, and they hate China. Also this month, the British media. The Telegraph urged BBC to stop employing those who despise their own country and lectured BBC on what true patriotism is in another piece. It means BBC must be run by true patriots. But when it comes to China's Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, the Telegraph said allowing only candidates deemed patriotic would be devastating for Hong Kong. So patriotism for BBC, yes, 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 and patriotism for Hong Kong, no, no, no. These cases perfectly prove that the Western media, with a craving for clicks and views, is promoting its own ideology, be it left or right, conservative or liberal, and they clearly have an agenda against China. You might have heard of their underworld filter to portray China as a bleak, depressing presence. Well, that's just nothing compared to the wording. Just look, the Belt and Road Initiative, a dead trap. China's technological advance, forced transfer and theft. China's success in containing the coronavirus cover up. China donating masks and vaccines diplomacy. Even China's digital currency is now a threat to the world. Can you believe it? The Twitter account for Panda is labeled China State Affiliated Media, so pandas can do propaganda. Another example here. After the WHO team finished their coronavirus origin tracing work in Wuhan, several Western news outlets reported that China had refused to share data with the team, despite the fact that several members of the team said the reports were totally false and their trip was more than rewarding. But their smear campaign doesn't stop there. Hundreds of thousands of people from ethnic minorities, including the Uyghur community, are being forced by the Chinese authorities to pick cotton in the far western region of Xinjiang. Wait, are those two people picking cotton's forced labor? I don't think that's enough for such a large field. I'll give you more. How about that? I bet those smiles and dances are forced as well, and these machines as forced labor work a lot faster. And look, we also have a colleague out there picking cottons. German national agent Zans produced a report claiming there's concentration camps and forced labor in Xinjiang. Meanwhile, French writer Maxim Vivas also wrote a book entitled "Wiggers to Put an End to Fake News" after his two trips there. It finds that Xinjiang enjoys prosperity and stability for its people. He also said countless lies are being spread by people who have never been to Xinjiang. You know what happens? Adrian's report is widely cited, and Maxim's book is barely mentioned by Western media. Yes, that's the true color of Western media, or should we say, Western propaganda? If you don't believe me, see for yourself. But just remember, the next time we read one of their articles, keep an open mind. <laughs>